Hello and welcome to my video review of Transformers Studio Series Transformers 1 Leader Class Blackout. Now, this is my second video and this is a bigger figure, so this should be interesting. But here he is in his helicopter mode. Honestly, I don't know the specifics of his hel like what model exactly, other than it's a military chopper, but you know. God. Honestly, I will say I really love the detail alone on the Studios figures, Studio Series figures. I didn't say that in the Bumblebee video, but I'm saying that here because you have his Air Force logo right there, and then you got Blackout on his tail there. Let's zoom in because it's a little bit easier to read that way. You actually have his... 400 X, 4500 X-ray tag here, and then danger keep away, and you also have the Air Force logo. Whoops, wrong way. Right there on his. It's not really a wing because helicopters don't really have wings, but the side of the vehicle. <laughs> a something I don't know. Again, I don't really know helicopter specifics but again you got 4500 x-ray there on the front as well as nice little Decepticon symbol try saying signal <laughs> so you got honestly again really just love the studio series figures Looking at his bottom, you can kind of see how he basically folds up and unfolds and also, of course, it's not whoop, blackout without Scorpionelic. And honestly, his little, tra I guess you could call it transformation, but really you just bring his tail up, move his pincers, boom, Scorpionelic. So... Hmm. His propellers actually spin really nicely. I mean, you can get a really good spin on them, as you can see on the video here. And of course, his back tail, or tail propeller also spins pretty nicely. Alright. We move Scorpionock off to the side for now. And to transform him, first you want to pop off his tail wing and fold that over like that and that's basically that part for now all right now hey first try I usually have trouble trying to get that first try but you want to split the propellers and then bring him back here that gets him his little like cape I guess you could call it that. Alright, and then from here, you want to untab these from here and pull them forward. We'll just leave them. Come on. Like, there we go. That for now. And then you want to come to... Of course, I'm filming and now this doesn't want to budge at all. There we go untab that and split it bring both parts up like this now obviously there's better ways to or I guess better order to do this this is just how I do it but from there I want to take this whole part right here and untab it from the main body or of the helicopter. Same with that side. And then from here, get a good angle. I'm going to split it right there. Bring it down. Like so. I'm going to rotate it at his not really his, I guess that's the f bicep, 
Yeah, that's totally the bicep. And then you want to take his hand out from here. But first, I also want to take this part, untab it from here, and rotate it down. And then you can leave his hand closed or open it. Personally, I like to open it a little. But you want to take this whole part that was the side of the helicopter, fold it over like so, and then you can see this right here and that tab, they're gonna that's gonna tab into there. And now he has his arm. Alright, and then basically same thing over here of split, bring down, whoops, rotate at the bicep, bring out his hand, rotate that part down. Again, I don't know helicopter specifics. I don't even know car specifics, so that will be fun on other vehicle, their car modes. Yeah, words. <laughs> then the same thing, you want to take this and tap it into there. And there's his arm. And then you'll notice he has tabs right here and it's going to go in right there and snaps right in. Now honestly, transforming him back, I'm always afraid I'm going to break something, especially since it almost looks like there's stress marks on that one, but so far no issues. Same thing on that side of bring it in, tap it in, and it's supposed to clip in there also, like tab in, but it never wants to stay put on my figure. I just don't know if that's my figure, if that's the case with all the figures, but yeah. Alright, and then bring these parts in. They'll tab forward like so. Alright, and then going back to his back half, you want to untab those parts from there, and that's going to want to start folding in, but we'll well, actually, from here, you can just fold in that part into there. But as you can see, his whole waist has basically come forward, because it goes from there and folds down like so. Which you want to bring his legs down like so, and then fold his waist piece down like that, but before you do that, you want to take his front landing gear here and start pushing it in, and then bring that part down also, and that'll make his head pop up. I like get actually get his head coming up on camera. But yeah, basically have like that. Push the landing gear and that up, and there's his head. All right, and then just tab his waist in. And then from here, you want to untab these parts from the engine turbine. Bring it up right behind his head, and then you want to tab it into the back of the helicopter, like right under the propellers, and then these parts just down and to the side, like that. Now, honestly, these parts remind me of the old Minicon ports from like the Armada to Cybertron lines, but I honestly don't know if they actually work. I've never tried it, but anyways. Right, and then from here, on his feet, you want to rotate these forward. And then bring this down. That will bring that part up. Fold up his landing gear. Again. Up. Fold. And then this part, you want to bring out like that. Fold. We'll untab it from there and fold it in. 
rotate it around, push it back in, and that's his feet. I will admit his feet are a little awkward for my liking, but not enough for me to not like the figure. That same thing. Down, pull out, fold that part in, push back in, and there's his feet. Yeah, he has that on his bottom of his feet, but again, easily just the, the way he transforms is kind of a given, but you know. And then, of course, you want to bend there because all the Decepticons have that, like, weird legs that just bend in. Alright. Uh, and then, his gun is stays out like that in the movie, but the instructions tell you to fold it down like that. Honestly, I do it just because it gives him a more flat, streamlined front look. I mean, obviously you can still have it, like, come up for, like, attack, but, oops, that came untabbed. Whoops! Yeah, be careful of that popping off, especially during transformation. It happens, happens to me more times than I can count, honestly. Just give me a sec to tab this back in. <laughs> Maybe. Come out and black out. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Sorry about this. It's never given me this much issue trying to Tap it. There it goes. Tap it back in. All right. Straighten him back up. I also realized the. If you're not careful, it will push. The thruster will push that front uh, windshield forward. It's as simple as just untapping the turbine. Moving it out of the way, just pushing it down like so, bring it back up, and there. Much better. Alright, and his tail wing from earlier, you want to take it, and you could tab it on either side, but the instructions say this side, and personally to me it looks better on this side. But tap it in like so and I'll fix the camera in a second but here we have blackout his head was stuck under the turbine in his robot mode yeah uh, the uh, my 2007 original blackout figure was transformed I would show him with this blackout. I really have poor planning on these, as you can tell. But yeah, here he is in all his glory in robot mode. Put Scorponok back up here as well. Get a nice turn around. Like, I'll admit the fact that there's no way to fold the whole top half of the helicopter up behind him kind of bugs me, but it hides behind his uh, blade cape so you can't really tell. Yet you also have tabs back there that you can put Scorponok on that I'll show off later. But yeah, here he is. I will admit I'm bugged that his hands can't like rotate up to be, you know, normal hands, but so he's kind of just stuck with these like lobster claws almost. But again, doesn't dwin like diminish the figure any at all. Look at that head sculpt. I can't hold the camera straight. 
is amazing. I'm trying so hard not to cuss. Because <laughs> I don't know if small children will be watching. I mean, eh, I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you can, on that subject of this part where you can put Scorponok, oh, there he goes. <laughs> he usually has no issues standing up, honestly. But you want to almost put Scorponok back to how he was in for helicopter mode, fold those up, but this time you want to put his tail completely straight. I'm hitting the camera. And then he just plugs on, if I can get him, yeah, he has a tab right there on his, where a screw is, but yeah, just tap him on, and now Scorponok is concealed. Fix his legs. Now... Whoops, there it goes again. And doing that, you end up having his tail poke out from underneath, but minor detail. Still cool that he can basically store Scorponok back there, like in the movie. The Scorponok basically popped out from that same exact area. But, okay. Size comparison. Here he is next to Studio Series. Volkswagen Bumblebee and first movie studio series Camaro or original 70s Camaro honestly I can't remember and yeah obviously since they're the studio series are made to be actually height accurate with how they appear in the movie so norm naturally B would be short, but he's just shorter with this one. It, it's kind of lounging, er, lounging forward. I can't speak. Here he is with Studio Series Ironhide. Again, still pretty tall. He'd be taller with his legs. Like, if you keep his legs straight, which honestly, when I first got him, that's what I did, because I forgot about the whole bending at the knees, but... It's... And... Have him with a fellow Decepticon, because, again, my Brawl and Starscream aren't in robot mode. But, whoop. This guy is always a pain to get standing. But it's... don't lean backwards. Ooh, there goes blackout. Good thing these Studio Series figures are very sturdy, which I really love that they are sturdy. So when cases like that happen, it, nothing is damaged or broken. And honestly, I would be very upset if these figures got damaged or broken. Especially the leader class because they're like 50 bucks a pop. 50 bucks a figure. And honestly that won't stop me from buying them. Okay. Now that he's been strained out. Granted Megatron leans forward because again it's impossible to have him stand properly. Which will be interesting when I go to review him. But as you can see, I think this was the standard height for the movie leader class figures, but he's counting from the top of the turbine. He's about as tall as first movie Megatron, but counting his head, he's shorter. But you know what? I honestly hope we get a studio series of this Megatron because that would just be so cool. Honestly, I am ready for Barricade. I need to stop saying honestly. Uh, yeah. Take Megatron off. Uh, 
So yeah, that's Transformers Studio Series first movie leader class blackout.